Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB AI tester certification and we are in chapter 7 talking about how to test AI based systems with an overview and moving on to the last segment of this chapter which is talking about selecting a test approach for an ML system. Well, so this is going to be slightly longer as we are talking about different uh, unique things to take into consideration when it comes to the test approach for an ML model testing and uh, certainly is going to have a lot of things to be explored and discussed all together. So you need to be patient along with me to complete this particular tutorial with the best understanding. Now talking about a test approach, we have covered a few things in the fundamentals where we understood about test approach defines the overall objective and the definition to how exactly will you achieve the goals of the testing. Now, of course, in order to test a system, you have different activities, different techniques, different levels of tests to be performed at desired point of time. And that certainly makes a lot of difference that when these activities are being performed, sometimes few activities are being pre pawned for some specific objective or sometimes it just gets delayed because it cannot be done earlier. And in that context, it becomes very really important to understand how exactly the test approach for the ML systems can be defined. Now, an AI-based system will typically include both AI and non-AI components, and the test approach is based on risk analysis, which is the only important thing what we can have with us with respect to the AI-based system, because requirements are very, very limited. You hardly know what exactly are you really expecting, but risk analysis will tell us where exactly to drive the proportional amount of testing to address the biases or deviation from the expectation. So the test approach is mainly based on risk analysis for such a system and will include both conventional testing as well as more specialized testing to address those factors which are specific to AI components and AI based systems. The following list provides some technical risk and corresponding mitigations specific to the ML system itself. Note that this list only provides a limited set of example and that there are many more risks specific to ML system that require mitigation through testing. Of course, as the systems can be distinct and have different expectations, the list cannot be designed comprehensively. Certainly, it has only the limited options what are quite common among ML systems. But of course, as you start working on your product, you may have more niche information available for you. So let's get started. The very first risk aspect what we have is data quality may be lower than expected, which is very commonly understood so far in our previous chapters. What could be the possible mitigation here? This risk may become an issue in several ways, uh, each of which may be prevented in different manner, which we have covered already in chapter four a lot about it. Common mitigation includes the use of reviews, EDA and dynamic testing, right? So we certainly can perform reviews to make sure that <clears throat> the data are appropriate and the quality is up to the mark for the data set. The second aspect we have is the operational data pipeline may be faulty. Now this can be mitigated, uh, like this risk can be partially mitigated by dynamic testing of the individual pipeline components and the integration testing of complete pipeline. So passing on the data and moving on from uh, one node to another node, which is neurons, and we need to test them. So this pipeline can be broken or kind of like uh, have faulty outputs. So we do have to go ahead and check everything in more detail at the integrations. The third aspect, what we have here is the ML workflow used to develop the model may be suboptimal. Now this risk could be due to the following reason. First of all, a lack of upfront agreement on the ML workflow to be followed, because if you are not sure what algorithm basically gets applied for an AI based system, this is where these kind of risks basically happens. Because if the workflow used is, of course, uh, the suboptimal requirement or below that, then certainly we did not consider any factors to determine how exactly uh, we should decide the use of the right algorithm. So. It is one reason that why we should have this problem. Second, a poor choice of workflow. You just choose something which probably you did not consider in any kind of analysis. And third, data engineers failing to follow the workflow. No matter you would have chosen the best workflow applicable to that AI based system, but you have not 
right? Kind of like implemented exactly the same. Anyways, reviews with experts may mitigate the chance of choosing the wrong workflow, while more hands-on management or audits could address the problems of agreement on and implementation of the workflow. So one thing, of course, you can have the experts to avoid using or choosing wrong workflow. And second is consistent audits, uh, which would help you to uh, make sure that you are in line with the expectation. Well, there's a lot more to talk about. Of course, we do have the next one as the choice of ML framework, algorithm, model, model settings, and or hyperparameters maybe also sub suboptimal. So talking about different aspects, right? So this is another set of aspects which we need to take into account. Now this risk could be due to the lack of expertise of the decision makers or to the poor implementation of the evaluation and tuning steps of the ML workflow. So these are the few reasons why you would have any kind of problem with these major aspects of algorithm, model, model settings, or any kind of hyperparameters. <clears throat> The only way to mitigate this is uh, understood as reviews with expert, help you to mitigate the chance of taking wrong decisions and better management may ensure that the evaluation and tuning and the test steps of the workflow are followed. So point being made is these are some of the things which relates to the process and decision making. Decision making, you need someone who is really expert to guide you well, mentor you and assist you as much as possible. On the other hand, when it comes to uh, assuring the executions and evaluation that has to be audited or kind of like reviewed uh, in terms of like how much we have done and what the, was it really efficient or reliable. Well, the next one is the desired ML functional performance criteria may not be delivered operationally despite the ML components meeting those criteria in isolation. So isolation in the sense like independently, they are trying to do what they're expected to do. But when we uh, integrate the two integrate them together, bring them up together, it may not do the desirable outputs. So the risk could be due to the data sets used for training and testing. Training is independent, so uh, the difference between the training and the testing data sets could bring this problem. Uh, model in isolation not being representative of the data encountered operationally, right? Because one thing, we, if you remember, we got three sets of data, right? And those three set of data basically are for training, testing, and evaluation of the operational environment. And uh, it might be that you have not considered something which is realistic in order to train and test the system, which you thought that independently it was working absolutely fine. But when it went live into the market, it was not doing the same because the data is only the reason what could be different in this case. Reviews, again, could be one of the things which uh, of the selected data set by experts or users might mitigate the chance that selected data is not representative. The next one here is the desired ML functional performance criteria are met, but the users may be unhappy with the delivered result. Now this risk could be due to the selection of wrong performance criteria because performance criteria are chosen based on what exactly the end users want. So I may have different set of meters as what I really have to evaluate but as I just choose some random matrices, it may not really make sense to the end user. So it's, it is very, very important that you should look forward to understand what are the end results and expectations of the user. And uh, we should look forward to choose matrices according to that. I'm not saying people will be so foolish in the real time industry. We're just saying that this is one of the risks where we can ignore things or be negligent and this risk can happen. Again, the mitigation steps includes reviews with expert which may help you to mitigate the chance of choosing the wrong ML functional performance matrix or experience-based testing could also identify inappropriate criteria. The risk could also be due to concept drift because over a period of time, expectations of users may change. In this case, more frequent testing of operational system could mitigate the risk. So it's just that possible, but we need to identify what should be done at what point of time and with what kind of relevancy. Well, moving on to the next one here is the uh, desired ML functional performance criteria are met, but the users may be unhappy with the delivered service. So the previous one was related to the results and this one is related to service. So it's exactly not the same thing, right? So service and results are different. 
This risk could be due to the lack of focus on the system's non-functional requirements because that defines the quality attribute. Note that the range of quality characteristics for AI-based system extends beyond those listed in ISO IEC 25010, which is basically our other standards which we have discussed in the chapter 2. Using a risk-based approach to prioritize the quality characteristics and performing the relevant non-functional testing could mitigate the risk. Now, what do we mean by saying that it may extend beyond the list of all these uh, non-functional characteristics? Because these are some of the common things, right? We talk about uh, portability, performance, uh, security, or you know, installability, or uh, inter interoperability, usability. These are the common quality characteristics which are related to 251.0. And uh, Paul, they're trying to say that AI-based systems certainly may have more more specific needs on the quality characteristics than the one what we are talking about right now. So they have specific relations to their own world, of course. So alternatively, the problem could be due to a combination of factors, right? So that could be identified through experience-based testing itself as a part of system testing. Chapter eight will talk more about how these, how to test these characteristics. So. We will be moving that next, so we'll be talking about it. The next one here is the self-learning system may not be providing the service expected by the user. Now, self-learning system, okay, slight twist again. We are talking about the ML function now. We are not talking about the matrices now. We are talking about the self-learning system. So if you're talking about system to learn on its own, then probably it might be learning something which is not desirable events as an outcome. So this risk could be due to various reasons, for example, uh, the data used by the system for self-learning may be inappropriate. In this case, reviews by expert could identify the problematic data. The system may be failing due to new self-learned functionality being unacceptable. This could be mitigated by automated regression testing, including performance comparison with the previous functionality. Why? Because again here, newly self-learned item being unacceptable. That means this is not what we really wanted to make the system do but your data as per the reality could be different and in that context it might have some unacceptable information being you know feed it in which is certainly needs to be you know drawn back the third option is the system may be learning of in a way that it is not expected by the user which could be detected by experience-based testing itself so three things here one is inappropriate second is unacceptable and third is not desirable outcomes according to the user. Mitigation is of course experience-based testing. Well, moving on to the final items and of course the next one here is users may be frost, uh, frustrated by not understanding how the, how the system determines its decision. That means no clarity about how exactly system works. Now this risk could be due to the lack of explainability interpretability and its transparency and all that you have to do is just work on it like perform the required level of test to measure them the last one here is users may find that the model provides excellent predictions when the data is similar to the training data but provides poor results otherwise that means it's hard-coded right so the risk may be due to overfitting right which we have discussed earlier in our chapter 3 which may be detected by testing the model with a data set that is completely independent from the training data set or performing experience-based testing. So point being made in the last one here is that sometimes we just keep you know, feeding in the data with exactly similar details and that's what you call it as overfitting. And in that context, what happens as it is slightly you know, same with each other, you may not look forward to predict anything else other than that. And that's where it may happen uh, that the system may not recognize or behave you know appropriately according to the new data so you should not be certainly doing that called as overfitting so in this case you should certainly look forward to detect these uh, by testing the model uh, by using a different data set so that it's not exactly the same anyways put together there were a lot of risk which we wanted to address and answering these risks will basically determine the overall test approach for ml models right I hope you had a good understanding of this. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.